more examples of how to work with rational expressions, and in particular, how to simplify rational expressions. Again, rational expressions are expressions in algebra that are written in a fraction form. Uh, there's no equal signs here. We're not solving for any values. We're not solving for x. We're simply taking the expression and trying to write it in a simplified manner, which typically requires us to do some factoring so we can look for common factors in the numerator and the denominator. So let's do that. Looking at our first example here, we look at the numerator, and that looks like the difference of squares, so I know how to factor that. I can write that as an x plus 3 times an x minus 3. And when I look at the denominator, that looks also factorable, so I know I'm going to need a product of two binomials, so I'll write the parentheses. I know that to get the x squared, I need an x and an x. When I look at the signs, I see a negative here and a positive there. That means they both must be negative, because when I multiply them together, I get a positive 9. When I add them together, I get a negative 6. And it looks like mm, a 3 and a 3 will work. So 3 and 3, because when I multiply, I get a positive 9. When I add them, I get a negative 6, so that's correct. And now I can see that in the numerator, I have an x minus 3. In the denominator, I have an x minus 3, so I can cancel those out. That counts out to 1 and 1. And so this can be written as x plus 3 divided by x minus 3. All right. And for our next example here, when you look at it, you say, wow, I can just regularly uh, factor that as I did over here. I need to do something first. I realize I have even coefficients, numerical coefficients in the numerator, so I can factor out a 2. Then also realize having an x cubed, an x squared, and an x here to the first power, I can also factor out an x in the numerator. And looking at the denominator, same thing. I can factor out a 4, and it looks like I can also factor out an x. So let me do that first. So this is equal to 2x times x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now, just to make sure we did it correctly, if we multiply this back in with this, do we get what we started with? 2x times this gives us a 2x cubed. 2x times this gives us a 6x squared. 2x times this gives, gives us a minus 8x. So we're good. Divide that by, if I factor out a 4x, I have remaining an x squared plus x to the first power and minus 2. Again, just to make sure we did it correctly, Multiply back in, 4x times this, 4x cubed, 4x times this, 4x squared, 4x times this, minus 8x. We're good to go. Now, is what's in parentheses factorable? Well, let's try that. So this is 2x times, and if it's factorable, we should be able to write it like this, the product of two binomials in the denominator, same thing. If that's factorable, we should be able to write it like this. So in the numerator, I'm going to need an x and an x. Signs, one will be positive, one will be negative, because this is negative, that's positive, so a plus and a minus. When I multiply them together, I get a negative 4. When I add them together, a positive 3. How about plus 4 minus 1? Because negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4. Plus 4 plus a negative 1 gives me a plus 3, so that's good. For the denominator, I'll have an x and an x. Sign-wise, again, a negative and a positive. And when I multiply them together, I get negative 2. When I add them, a positive 1. So that would be a plus 2 and a negative 1. Negative 1 times a positive 2 gives me negative 2. A plus 2 added to a negative 1 gives me a plus 1. So that's correct as well. Now we can go ahead and see if anything is, we can simplify anything. Um, we can cancel out an x and an x. Those cancel out. And 2 and a 4, they're both divisible by 2. So this becomes a 1 and this becomes a 2. And over here, I have an x minus 1 and an x minus 1. They cancel out. And so I'm left with a 1 times x plus 4. And the denominator, 2 times x plus 2. And that's a simplified form for this particular rational expression. Now, looking at our third example here, let's see if we can factor that one. And right away, I realize that I have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x cubed. So I should be able to factor an x cubed in the numerator. I can also factor out a 5. In the denominator, I can factor out a 2. And it looks like I can factor out an x. So let me do that first. So this is equal to 5x cubed times 2x squared plus x minus 6. All right, just to make sure I did this correctly, if I multiply this back together, 5x cubed times this gives me a 10x to the fifth. 5x cubed times this gives, gives me a 5x to the fourth. 5x cubed times this gives me a minus 30x cubed. And we divide that all by, when we factor out a 2x, I end up with a x squared 
minus x plus o, not plus, because I have a minus here, minus 6. All right, just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, 2x times this gives me 2x cubed, 2x times this gives me minus 2x squared, 2x times this gives me minus 12x. All right, so now at least I can see that I can factor out this x with this x cubed here. We'll do that a little later. I now have to rewrite this whole thing with numerator and denominator factor. So this is equal to 5x cubed times the product of two binomials divided by 2x times the product of two binomials. Now the denominator is relatively easy to factor. We know that we're going to need an x and an x. The signs have to be negative, otherwise I can't get a negative here, so positive and negative. And then I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get negative 6. When I add them together, I get a negative 1. That means that the negative number is 1 bigger than the positive number. When I multiply, I get a negative 6, so that would be a negative 3 and a positive 2. Now to factor the numerator, I have a bit of a problem because I see a coefficient in front of the x squared term, which means you can just simply factor that. I'm going to go to the side here and rewrite the numerator as 2x squared plus x minus 6, and now we're going to rewrite this as the, the center or the middle term as the sum of two middle terms. So we're going to write this as 2x squared, and we're going to need two middle terms minus 6. And what are those two middle terms? Well, those two middle terms can be found by saying that the sum must equal a positive 1, and the product of the two must equal the product of these two right here, which is 2 times a negative 6 or a negative 12. So I'm looking for two numbers. When I add them together, I get a positive 1, and when I multiply them together, I get a negative 12. So 4 and 3, that should work, and a positive 4 and a negative 3 definitely works. I'm going to write this as a plus, plus 4x minus 3x. Now I'm going to group them in two groups of two, this group, this group, and this group. I can see that out of the first group of two, I can factor out a 2x, and I'm left with an x plus 4. Oh, not plus 4, but plus 2, because I factor out a 2 as well. And here it looks like I can factor out a negative 3. That leaves me with an x plus 2 as well. And now if I look at this term and this term, I realize I can factor out an x minus 2. So this can be written as x plus 2 times a 2x minus 3. And those are the factored form. That's the factored form of this trinomial, which means I can plug those in here, and I end up with an x plus 2 and a 2x minus 3. Oh, minus 3. There we go. And now I'm ready to go ahead and factor the rest of the problem. I can right away see that I have an x plus 2 and an x plus 2 here. I have an x and an x cubed that becomes an x squared, and so now I can write this as 5x squared times 2x minus 3 divided by 2 times x minus 3. And that's the simplified form of my original expression. All right, this is actually a good exercise in factoring as well as in simplifying rational expressions. So here's another example of how we can factor something where we don't have a 1 in front of the x squared term. All right, go ahead and give those a try, and uh, we'll come up with some more examples for you to look at.